Welcome to another edition of Lakeville's City Council Wrap-Up. During this program, we will highlight the agenda items presented to the Lakeville City Council at their January 5th, 2015 meeting. First highlighted item on the agenda is item number 5C, Public Works Department Monthly Report. And to provide the background information on this agenda item is Public Works Director Chris Petrie. Uh, but I am here to present the December 2014 monthly report for the Public Works Department. And we'll start talking about uh, the County Road 5060 roundabout project. And we were very fortunate with the weather that we had in December. The contractor did make good use of the uh, above average temperatures and uh, minimal amounts of snow. Uh, work, as you can see, continued on the retaining walls uh, that are along Kenwood Trail between Jaguar Path and 185th Street or County Road 60, and they have been substantially completed. You can see a lot of that work was aided by the placement of concrete footings. You can see that in the photo on the left-hand side, so that work was able to continue into the winter months. Of course, work on that project will pick up again uh, in the spring. Home demolitions, uh, we did complete <coughs> Two demolitions of homes, one at 19920 Kenwood Trail, that's the photo on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, and the other one at 19348 Dodd Boulevard, that's in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You can see the excavators make quick work of the home demolitions uh, and complete the work in less than about half an hour. Uh, the next slide I have for you this evening is we did have a couple of water main breaks uh, in December. Both were in the vicinity of Interlochen uh, Boulevard and Crystal Hills Road uh, that resulted in some water shutoffs for the residents in the area on Friday, December 19th. In one case, and that's the photo on the left-hand side, uh, we had uh, some of the bolts on a gate valve that corroded through and the gate valve actually let loose and caused a, uh, a water main break. Our crews were able to repair that. And at the same time, and further up the hill and to the south, we actually had to utilize a contractor. You can see the contractor there with the excavator doing the work where we had a significant water main break in a pipe that uh, resulted in uh, or what was caused by a hole in the side of the pipe and that unfortunately again was due to the corrosive nature of the soils in the area and that's something I know the council is aware of as we've been talking about it and how it relates to our street reconstruction program. Near road air pollution monitoring, uh, don't say that three times fast. In February 2010, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency did finalize new minimum monitoring requirements for nitrogen dioxide. And then in August 2011, the EPA extended those monitoring requirements to include carbon monoxide. In Minnesota, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency is installing two near-road uh, monitoring sites in the Twin Cities metropolitan area. The first site began operating in January 2013 along I-94 and I-35 Commons near downtown Minneapolis. The second site that you see here was recently installed and will begin operation in January of 2015 along I-35 in Lakeville, and that is in front of the Gander Mountain site and the property that is uh, owned and maintained by MnDOT. The selection of the sites is based on a number of things, daily traffic counts, roadway design, congestion patterns, terrain, and projections for future growth. Both nitrogen dioxide and carbon monoxide come principally from motor vehicle exhausts. In mid-December, our fuel tanks and the fill station for those fuel tanks at the city's water treatment facility were removed and decommissioned. Uh, this comes after the completion of the central maintenance facility in 2005 and then upgrades to our fuel system that exists at our central maintenance facility in 2013. Uh, the water treatment facility fueling site was no longer needed. Uh, reducing to a single fueling site has improved the tracking of our fuel use as well as our vehicle preventative maintenance. Uh, the old fuel system that you see here, and it was in front of the council uh, a couple of months ago, uh, was sold to a contractor through a sealed bid process. And the last few slides I have for you being that it's the end of 2014, 
um, is our water use year to date. And water use in 2014 was 2.236 billion gallons compared to the 10 year average of 2.341 billion gallons. It's about 5% less than the 10 year average. Monthly water use, you can see for the fourth quarter of 2014 was slightly higher than the 10 year average. However, the extremely wet spring and summer kind of set the tone for the year and resulted in that year end total as well being a little less than the 10 year average. Water use per person or per capita uh, for the fourth quarter was approximately 75 gallons per person per day, uh, which is fairly consistent with our 10 year average. And lastly, you can see the trends of our average day and our peak day water use. The peak day every month is the red line and the average use is the blue line. Our peak day, uh, as a reminder, the council was in August, actually August 15th, with over 16 million gallons of water being used. And that concludes the monthly report for December 2014. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number seven, Bears Ridge Development. And to give you the background information on this agenda item is City Planner Daryl Morey. Um, I don't have a lot to add uh, to Mr. Anderson's presentation. Maybe just uh, put some colored graphics if I could get the overhead, please, uh, Jim. Uh, in terms of the location of the preliminary plat was already described, uh, 366 single family lots, nine out lots, 151 acres. Uh, also in conjunction with the preliminary plat, as mentioned, was the comprehensive plan amendment uh, to re-guide a couple of areas uh, and to bring this northeasterly quarter, as Mr. Anderson mentioned, into the current MUSA and guide that for low density residential land use. There's also part of the comp plan amendment is to re-guide the portion that the developer will be buying from St. John's Church which is right now guided for uh, public or quasi-public land use to re-guide that again to low density residential for the single family um, lots that are being proposed as part of this development. The zoning map amendment uh, includes rezoning of three areas. Again, the northeast corner, since that's being brought into the MUSA and re-guided low density residential needs to be rezoned from RA to RS3, single family residential. The proposal for the southerly portion to be rezoned from RS3 to RS4, i.e. the smaller lot singles. And then there's just a little piece of property right here that is zoned uh, public open space uh, that is being included to square off a lot as part of the plat that needs to be also again rezoned to RS3. This is the uh, layout of the preliminary plat. A uh, couple of features that I'd like to highlight uh, regarding this. Uh, as Mr. Anderson mentioned, it's been uh, under review for quite some time. Part of the reason for that is because of the number of single family lots that are proposed, uh, it is required to go through an environmental review process uh, known as an environmental assessment worksheet. That EAW was prepared by the developer last year and uh, <coughs> approved with the negative declaration by the city council in September, which then um, allowed the developer to proceed with the preliminary plat, which you have before you this evening. <coughs> The couple of things regarding um, streets, as Mr. Anderson mentioned, it's uh, proposed to connect 200th Street, which uh, intersects with um, Highview Avenue right now. That is a uh, known as Heritage Drive to the west. It's a uh, minor collector street that would continue on and connect with 200th Street at Hamburg Avenue. Um, a couple of things regarding the uh, improvements to 200, uh, excuse me, 200 Street and Hamburg Avenue. Um, the intersection, as council is well aware of Hamburg and County Road 50, is not the best in terms of uh, its sight lines. And that is a intersection that will need improvements. The county, as part of their review of this preliminary plat, identified that as well. 
Uh, those improvements are not in the city or the county's current five-year CIPs. Uh, and because of that, at such time when the uh, phase of the development that includes um, connections to extension of Hamburg Avenue and connections to 200 Street, when that uh, work is complete or when that phase is proposed, at that time there will need to be improvements to that intersection. And that will include uh, probably a slight lowering of the street in that area to help with the sight lines as well as the construction of left and right turn lanes on County Road 50 uh, again to improve safety at that intersection. <coughs> the portion of Hamburg Avenue uh, at least the westerly portion adjacent to this plat will be upgraded to an urban section and there will be no driveway accesses allowed between County Road 50 and 200th Street the portion of Hamburg north of 200th Street, as you can see, it, it's somewhat of a curvilinear uh, design. Uh, those lots that are corner lots will be required to have their driveway access off of the intersecting local street um, to, again, help reduce driveway accesses off of that roadway. Same thing for 200th Street. Those uh, lots that are corner lots will have their driveway access off of the adjacent local streets versus off of 200th Street. One last point, when the uh, intersection of 200th Street and Hamburg is uh, constructed, which is per currently identified for phase three, the developer at the recommendation of the Planning Commission will be required to pave 200th Street between Hamburg and Cedar, uh, so it would no longer be a gravel road. Uh, mm -hmm. Our The study, traffic study that was done with the uh, EAW identified traffic volumes on that gravel road when that intersection is completed that would be beyond the uh, normal counts that you would have for ma maintenance of a gravel road. So uh, that will be paved by the developer and again that's anticipated to be phase three. And this is the phasing plan, not quite as colorful as the preliminary plat. Uh, the initial phase will be the phase uh, adjacent to uh, just to the east of St. John's Church. The phase that in, again includes the adjacent to Hamburg Avenue includes the extension or intersection with 200th Street is phase three. The development project proposes six phases, uh, approximately one phase a year. So again, it'd be about three years from now when that <coughs> phase three would be in if everything goes according to the developer's plan and those uh, improvements to Hamburg, 200th Street, and the intersection of Hamburg and 50 would then be part of that, uh, that development phase. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on the preliminary plat and the comprehensive plan and zoning map amendments at their December 18th meeting and unanimously recommended approval. There was public comment from four residents, uh, two representing St. John's Church and two other residents that live in the area off of Hamburg Avenue raising questions uh, such as access, uh, utility uh, service, and uh, street improvements. Those were all addressed by staff and the Planning Commission at that meeting. The Parks, Recreation, and Natural Resources Committee also unanimously recommended approval of the preliminary plat. And in summary, staff is recommending approval uh, of the preliminary plat, comp plan, and zoning map amendments subject to the 16 stipulations being recommended by the Planning Commission and also adoption of the findings of fact. And I can stand for questions. Item number seven was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Next highlighted item on the agenda is item number eight, labor agreement between the City of Lakeville and Law Enforcement Labor Services Incorporated, local number 128. And to give the background information on this agenda item is Human Resource Director, Cindy Justin. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is the labor agreement that we began working on in the fall of 2013. Uh, we were able to reach settlement on health insurance, which is exactly the same as what we gave to all other employees. Uh, we were not able to reach settlement on wages, and we went through mediation and finally to arbitration. The arbitrator awarded 2% for 2014 and 3% for 2015. Um, these. Um, this information was reviewed by the Personnel Committee, so. Item number eight was approved by the Lakeville City Council. Well, those were the highlighted items presented to the Council at their January 5th, 2015 meeting. 
If you have any questions or comments regarding these agenda items, please feel free to call City Hall. The number is 952-985-4400. Thanks for watching this edition of Lakeville City Council Wrap-Up. Yes? Do you have a carbon monoxide detector? Uh, uh, what, what? I don't think that's any of your business. Let's find out. Well, hey! Hey! Now, what is carbon monoxide and why do I need an alarm to tell me about it? <laughs> carbon monoxide is produced whenever any fuel such as gas, oil, kerosene, wood, or charcoal is burned. You can't see or smell carbon monoxide, but at high levels, it can kill a person in minutes. Oh, that's not good. You're right. Well, hey, where are you going? Ah, oh, breakfast for me, eh? Oh, God, this is mine. Oh. Did you know that recently, CO detectors were required by law in all Minnesota residents to help save lives? Well, that's a good start, but what else can I do to protect my family? There are things you can do to make sure you don't become a statistic. And I bet he's going to tell me what they are. You got it, sister! <laughs> Place a CO alarm within 10 feet of each room used for sleeping. CO detectors with the digital readout and peak level buttons are preferred. Batteries should be replaced once a year. Make sure they're fresh. Check the manufacturer's date on the back of the alarm. Replace alarms every five years. So, if the alarm goes off and I'm feeling sick, I, I exit the house, go to a neighbor's house, and I call 911. <laughs> oh, oh. For more information on how to reduce your risk from CO and other combustion gases, you can visit the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission website at www.cpsc.gov. So, don't get yourself in a pickle over carbon monoxide. Hey! Oh. <laughs>